The Utah Jazz are silencing all doubters and skeptics. Coming into the season, everyone expected the Jazz, who traded two all-stars in the summer, to take a nosedive in the standings in order to admirably tank for a top pick in a loaded 2023 NBA draft. But there's one thing we all overlooked. The Jazz have too many good players. Not many people could have anticipated this mishmash of role players, above average starters, and a rookie head coach to play such unselfish and poised basketball. But no one, and I mean no one, expected that Utah would have one of the best records in the league a month into the season because of it. Except for the Jazz themselves, of course. As the Jazz's perpetual leader, Mike Conley came into training camp with the belief that this team was poised to prove people wrong, telling The Athletic, We have too many good players to tank. We knew from day one, this wasn't a rebuild. We told ourselves that we aren't that bad and the guys locked in on that. We had a collective belief system and we knew we had a good chance to have a good start. And it comes as no surprise that it's the 16 year veteran Conley that is leading the charge for Utah at age 35. After all, Conley is used to being in this position. As one of the foundational pillars of the Memphis Grizzlies through the early 2010s, the feisty, underrated point guard rarely ever got the recognition he deserved. In fact, he didn't make his first all-star team until he arrived in Utah and helped the Jazz run a high-octane offense around Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert. But Conley had to take a step back in order to do that. And now with Gobert and Mitchell gone, he's back to being the focal point of another underrated, feisty team. And so far, he's thriving. His numbers aren't eye-popping by any means. He's averaging under 13 points a game on under 10 shot attempts per game, something he hasn't done since his third season in the league but he's still a dead-eye shooter hitting on over 40% of his threes. But what stands out is his playmaking, which is at a career best so far this season, averaging eight assists a game. He's making their offense hum, with the Jazz boasting a 123.9 offensive rating when he's on the court and a 106.8 rating without him. A lot of that has to do with how lethal Conley is in the pick and roll, and the options that come from that being the foundation of the Jazz's offense. Play number one, a high pick and roll with Conley and Lowry Markkinen. Conley makes a beautiful pocket pass that leads to the poster on his former teammate Gobert. Play number two, a side screen and roll with Kelly Olenek. The Timberwolves have to respect Olenek popping out for the three. There's miscommunication there, but Conley uses it to attack the basket and make a beautiful pass to Markkanen in the corner for a three. Play number three, Conley rejects the screen this time, gets downhill using his quick burst and finds Olenek open in the corner. Play number four, a Spain pick and roll involving Malik Beasley as the second screener. Conley attacks and uses the attention to create space for Olenek for the wide open three. Play number five, same Spain pick and roll. This time it frees up Colin Sexton on the weak side for a three ball. What makes Conley so versatile as a playmaker is that he can be the initiator, like he was on those plays I just showed you, or he can be the connector, unselfishly passing up an open shot for an even better one. That unselfishness has easily rubbed off on his teammates, with Jordan Clarkson, Markkanen, Olenek, and Jared Vanderbilt all averaging career highs and assists this season. It also helps that Conley has players around him who are avid scorers, in Clarkson, newly acquired players like Colin Sexton, Markkanen, Beasley, and even Olinick, who provides versatility at the big man spot for the Jazz. This means that Utah can hit you in a number of ways on offense. They just have the juice, and guards who can beat you off the dribble to create an advantage that can, in turn, get the defense in rotation. And the Jazz have the shooters to make defenses pay for it. That variety and versatility can be a headache for opposing defenses. Mix that in with the unselfishness that they play with, and you'll have possessions like this where everyone touches the basketball. Beasley, back inside. Kester holds and finds Sexton. How about the passing? Beautiful. Beasley, three. And I'd be remiss to not talk about one of the main reasons the Jazz system works so well. Markkanen, in his sixth season as a pro, has taken a considerable leap with the extra opportunity he's been given. He's averaging a career high in points while shooting only 34% from behind the arc. Where he's really thriving is inside the arc, shooting a career best at the rim, 
and on all mid-range shots, including 59% in the short mid-range area. Now, a lot of that has to do with his connection in the pick and roll with Conley, but it's also because Markkanen has markedly improved as a roller and a cutter. He's generating 1.44 points per possession as the roll man and 1.43 points per possession as a cutter. Essentially playing in an unselfish system with players like Conley and Olinick, who can make good reads has opened up Markkanen's game and he's made the most of it. And while Utah's offense has has been impressive, the Jazz are one of four teams to start the season with a top 10 offense and a top 10 defense, showing their commitment to both sides of the ball. Their recipe on defense is as follows. The Jazz finally have length across the board after being small for years with Gobert as their only towering presence. Now with Olenek, Vanderbilt, Markkinen, Beasley, and Taylor Horton Tucker, the Jazz have a rotation filled with guys with plus wingspans, especially Vanderbilt, who is constantly making reads and passing lanes, recovering out to contest shooters, and uses his length as a nominal center for Utah. That results in them forcing a lot of turnovers, the sixth highest rate in the league. They also don't let teams shoot a lot of threes, allowing the fourth fewest in the league and use their length to make those threes not be open ones, allowing the fourth fewest open shots in the league. They don't have much rim protection, allowing the third most shots in the restricted area, while teams shoot better than 64% around the basket. But Olenek has done a really good job so far playing drop, and there's enough length around him to counteract any shortcomings. In fact, Olenek leads all Jazz players in deflections this season as of this time of writing. In summation, the Jazz are exceeding expectations thanks to a savvy point guard and tons of offensive firepower, including a young player who has made a significant leap and are sound enough defensively to keep themselves afloat. And even if it isn't one of the best teams in the league real like they are right now, they're definitely more real than the tanking team everyone expected them to be on opening night. Utah can obviously decide they want to go in a different direction at some point this season, potentially trading Conley, Clarkson, Olinick, and any other parts that make this team too good. And in all likelihood, that probably will happen. But regardless, this puts the Jazz in a good position despite entering a new uncertain phase for the franchise. They have tons of draft capital that they gained from sending off their two all-stars this summer and now have a bunch of young, promising talent that they can build around as well as a rookie head coach in Will Hardy that seems to get the most out of his players. In just a few weeks, the outlook on the future of the Utah Jazz franchise has changed and it's thanks in part to this phenomenal start. Who would have thunk it?